I had spent most of my early life raising funds for St. Jude. I participated in Mathathon and fundraising events through my church youth group. We did bake sales and garage sales and never thinking that it someday would affect me. I was 18 when I was diagnosed and it dawned on me as I went through my treatment that now I'm one of the cancer kids and now I'm giving somebody else the opportunity to raise funds for me. I started my freshman year at Christian Brothers University. My friends and I really wanted to learn more about Teak and we were going to go to a social gathering and I just really wasn't feeling well. My best friend was my roommate and he said, if you don't feel better in the morning, I'm gonna take you to the emergency room. And the morning came and I felt much worse. And he literally picked me up and put me in his car and took me to the emergency room. And that's where they did a CAT scan on me and found tumors in 90% of my body. The doctors said that if I had stayed in my dorm room for three more days, I would have died there. They diagnosed me with an unknown cancer and said that we needed to get me to St. Jude as soon as possible. There's nothing really that can prepare you for the C word. There was a lot of crying and a lot of uncertainty. That all changed when I got to St. Jude. There is a vibe in this hospital that exudes life and survival and the ability to fight and carry on. And that gets into you and it makes you a tougher person, but it helps to make you a survivor. I was at work and we were having our Thanksgiving luncheon and my wife called me. She said, I've been having some problems and I went to the doctor. I just want to let you know that I'm pregnant. All right, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, nope. I got to stop for a second. Yeah, okay. And I said, what did you say? And she said, I'm pregnant and I passed out onto the ground. After two years of chemotherapy and radiation at St. Jude, I was told that the likelihood of me having a child probably would not be in my future. And so my whole life changed again, because not only did my life change when I went to St. Jude, my life changed when I found out that I was going to have a son. Once I accepted a bid to talk at Epsilon, I felt like I was doing the right thing and I was really happy with my decision. They, they always supported me, they helped me when I was down, they picked me up when I literally could not walk. Pledging Teak and not knowing that I was going to be a St. Jude patient, it was a shock to me to find out that Danny Thomas was a Teak. Is there such a thing as coincidence? I don't think so. I think everything happens for a reason. Here we are in Memphis, Tennessee, and the world is here. And kids are coming in from all over the place and they're being treated for all these diseases and all these different types of cancers. St. Jude not only helps these children with catastrophic diseases, but they also take that research and they apply it. They freely share that research with the outside world. So the fundraising that you're doing for St. Jude and helping a child here, you're not helping just a single child. You're helping the entire world. And to see my fraternity actively raising money to help the hospital and its continuing mission, I think that's an amazing thing to be a part of. It is such an honor to be a Teak and a privilege to be a St. Jude survivor.